Okay, so this is number five, the related rates question. <clears throat> so you know every related rates question has kind of a different flavor, so I strongly recommend that in addition to watching this video you try some of the other related rates questions from the section. So what does this one say? This one says, a kite 100 feet above the ground moves horizontally at a speed of 8 feet per second, and you can see I've kind of tried to indicate that on my diagram with this dashed green line with um, 8 written above it. And uh, here's the flying kite, of course. And the second sentence says, at what rate is the angle between the string and the horizontal decreasing when 200 feet of string has been let out? So I put theta in here. This is what they mean by the angle between the string and the horizontal. Um, this black line is supposed to be the ground. Um, so it makes a triangle. You know, frequently in these questions you end up with some kind of triangle. Um, this side is 100 because <coughs> they tell you that the kite is 100 feet above the ground. Um, and what else? So I've used S here to stand for the length of the string, even though at the moment we care about the string length is going to be 200, but you don't want to prematurely plug values in for these things. Um, and this horizontal distance, x, that's exactly what we care about because it's saying at what rate is, uh, well, okay, so it's not what we're trying to solve for, but it is the rate that we know. So see the, the kite is moving horizontally to the right at 8 feet per second. And so what is that in notation? That's dx dt, so that's the known rate. And then the rate that we're trying to find is d theta dt. So we need an equation that relates all these things. And there might be a couple choices, but the, the one that I think is the most natural is, are you thinking it to tan theta? Okay, so remember tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be 100 over x. Okay. All right, so this is our equation. So as should be familiar by now, in a related rates problem, you set up the equation and then take d dt of both sides. Okay. So because this variable with with respect to which I'm taking the derivative is t, I'm going to have an x prime popping out. So don't be surprised when that happens. So x prime is dx dt. Normally we take the derivative with respect to x and then dx dx is 1, but now we're going to have dx dt, which is which is 8, actually. So let's take the derivative of both sides of this equation. The derivative of the left is secant squared theta. Okay, and by the chain rule, uh, theta prime is going to pop out. Okay, and I'm using theta prime to stand for d theta dt. So that's what happens on the left. And on the right, I'm going to do this trick where I take the derivative of something over x like this. So just make the thing on top negative and then square the thing on the bottom. And now by the chain rule, I get an x prime. Okay, and this x prime is just dx dt, like I said right there. All right, and so we're getting close, huh? So the thing that we want is, is this, d theta dt which is the same same thing as theta prime. So I just need to isolate that. It's really easy. So I just um, I just divide both sides by secant squared theta, which is the same thing as multiplying through by cosine squared theta. So it just puts a cosine squared theta over here. The reason is that secant and cosine are reciprocals. And so this is times minus 100 over x squared um, times x prime. Okay, so now this this part about actually figuring out what this value is is a little bit hairy. Um, because we don't know x and we don't know theta, but at the same time we know enough to find both of them. So let's start with, with finding x. So let's take a second look at this triangle. So there's the hypotenuse. There is, um, this side is fixed at 100. This side is what we called s, the length of the string, but now we can assume that it's 200, and this is x, okay? So this is x at the moment when 
the string is 200 feet long. You can use the Pythagorean theorem here to find what x is. So what is it? x is the square root of 200 squared minus 100 squared uh, by the Pythagorean theorem. And that's the same thing as the square root of 30,000. Okay. And great. So now what about finding theta? Um, so let's draw the triangle again. I guess actually you don't need to use... You can do this several ways. So here's theta. We've completely solved this triangle. We know that this side is 100 and this side is 200. So in my notes I, I use I use tangent to figure out what the angle is. But maybe it's easier to use sine, so let's give that a try. So what if we do sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse is 100 over 200. So in other words, one half. Okay, and I hope you agree that, that finding the angle theta that makes sine spit out one half is not rocket science. Just write down, you know, it's either 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, or pi over 2. Turns out it's pi over 6. So theta is equal to pi over 6. All right. Now we know everything that occurs in this, in this um, mess here, because we know that x is equal to the square root of 30,000. We know that x prime is 8. And what is, what is cosine squared of theta? Let's just do that off to the side. So cosine squared of pi over 6. Um, so cosine of pi over 6 is the square root of 3 over 2. So if you square it, you get 3 fourths. Right. So theta prime is equal to 3 fourths um, times minus 100 over the square root of 30,000 squared is 30,000. And times x prime, which is 8. And you can leave it like that, but I multiplied all that stuff out, and it's minus uh, 0 0.02. And the units here are radians per second. So what's happening is, in this physical situation, as this um, little gust of wind is blowing the kite over at 8 feet per second, um, theta here is going down at a rate of 0.2 radians per second. And uh, that's it.